Today we're going to do a little water chemistry and after a hard day in the field collecting samples we brought back um, samples from well A and well B. And so let's take a look at the concentration in these. There's a little uh, test kit which is really a colorimetric uh, test and what we're going to see is by taking a water sample and adding reagents, we're going to develop a color that depends on the concentration of the potential contaminant. So <clears throat> the first test will be for phosphate. And what we're going to do is to take a um, beaker and we'll add a bit of water to this beaker. Oops. So we just pour it out of the beaker pour it out of the sample bottle into the beaker. And now we want to add, two, for every 25 cc's, we want to add two drops of this, uh, this reagent. So, I can get the cap undone here. All right. So we've got um, about 40 cc's in this case. So we'll put three drops of reagent in there. One, two, three. And one of the secrets of doing this is that there's so much extra reagent here that we <clears throat> um, are not going to be limited by the amount of reagent. So we'll mix this well. Okay, and next we take one of these cleverly designed little ampules. And so this is an ampule that has a second reagent in it. And it's got a tip that is going to break off when I push it in here. The, the, the ampule is evacuated as well, so there's a little bit of solution in here and a lot of space to draw up water. And we're going to draw some of the sample into the ampule. So now we break the ampule. We let the water suck in. And you can see what's happened. We've got um, now an ampule full of sample and it's starting to turn color. So we'll try to make sure we've mixed it well. There's one little bubble in there. And the other thing about this analysis is it, it takes a little bit of time for the color to develop. So I, uh, <clears throat> we need about two minutes for this color to develop. Okay, we're at about uh, a minute now, and we'll give it just another minute, and then uh, we'll take a, a reading. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold this up so we can compare it to um, what we have in the uh, in these um, test tubes. And so each of these is is uh, calibrated to give you the color from one ppm to 10 ppm phosphate. And let's see where we wind up being. So what would you say the match is? Well, clearly it's darker than this, darker than this, darker than this. What do you think? Darker than this? Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. a little. And, oh, well, we're, um, Maybe pretty close to being right around in here. And I'd say that uh, is most of the way to what's in, in uh, color standard 10. So it's probably about nine and a half parts per million in sample A. Okay, let's move to uh, <clears throat> sample B. And so this was collected from another well some distance from A and so 
we might expect it to have a different concentration. So put a bit in our glass beaker. I put a little less in because we don't need quite that much. And we have about uh, 25 cc's in there. So with 25 cc's, we want two drops of reagent one. I can get this open again. Okay, there are two drops and I'll stir. Good mixing is always important in these analyses. <clears throat> and we'll take another vial with reagent 2. So again, you can see that there's a little bit of reagent in there and a lot of space to draw water up. So we break the vial by pressing it into the bottom of the beaker. suck up in there and so you can see it looks very much like last time and we'll keep track of the time we're mixing and you you can see the color starting to develop Okay, well, we're not quite there as far as color goes, but let's take a look. And <clears throat> so far, so good. We see that, um, oh, it's darker than one, darker than two. And what do you think? Okay, so we're right around two minutes, and, well, I'd say it's a bit darker than uh, the one to the left. So, yeah. Okay, well, not quite as dark as uh, these guys. Well, I'd put this at um, somewhere in between six and seven, maybe closer to seven. And <clears throat> that means this one's got about uh, 65 part or 6.5 parts per million. And I would uh, say that this is about uh, then 70% of, um, of what we had in the first sample. So, more dilute, and if we compare the two, uh, the yes. first and the second, and so you see that the guy on the right is definitely darker. Okay. Start. All right, let's look at our second contaminant, and that will be copper. So this time we're going to start with the B sample, and we'll add a bit to the beaker. Try to Get right around 25 cc's in there. Okay, so we're at about 25 cc's. And in this case, we only need one reagent, which is found in this ampule. So once again, now that we've got the sample poured in there, we're going to press this on the bottom and we break it, let it draw up sample. Okay, and this is good. We see we got color already. Uh, let's check the time, and we'll give this one. This one's a little faster, so we'll give this a minute. Okay. 
Nixon. Okay, well, let's see where that falls. So, our color should be pretty close to complete by now. And we can see, well, we got a bit more than one, more than two. Okay, we'll check the color on copper. And it should have had plenty of time to develop. And we say, oh, where is it going to fall? And when I look at this, I get... Uh, say somewhere in the vicinity of um, between three and four. So here's the ampules, the final covers. We have A, B, A, B, A, B. You can see the B on average is lighter uh, than the A. So the phosphate, they're pretty clear. But as you can see, compare them. So A is on your left, B is on the right. A, B. A, B. We have phosphate, blue. Copper, the orange. Ammonia, yellow. And again, this is how we test for the concentrations of these contaminants, say in groundwater or surface waters.